All right, so we have a little bit to cover here. I'm going to try and go uh, slow and, and, and detailed. Uh, I have talked about Calypso BTS before. I've shown videos on it. The difference this time is we're going to run it all on the, uh, the Pi 4. I built uh, some packages that needed, the needed uh, uh, binaries to run on a Pi 4, and I'm going to test it on the C118 phone here, which is one of the Calypso-based um, phones that you see mentioned over on the left. All right, um, yeah, and by the end of this, you combine those two pieces, and you should have a GSM BTS uh, running uh, rather inexpensively uh, on those two pieces of equipment. Of course, you need a uh, cable, which you can um, read up on, that connects a USB from the Pi to the phone. I've not made that cable. I actually just purchased one that was pre-made works really well I actually have two of them and yeah and then we'll try and uh, at the end of it I will try and use uh, calibrate RTL to see if we can see that GSM network uh, with an RTL SDR and then uh, connect to it with an Android phone and uh, and to and to make this connection to the Pi uh, let me close this out we're gonna use uh, something different here uh, real VNC comes on the Dragon OS Pi build, but uh, in this case, in the latest Dragon OS Pi 64 R30, I've put uh, the app image for Rust Desk on Pi, or on the Pi, which I have uh, already started. You'll find it under Other, and I'll show you once I pull up the Pi, Other, Rust Desk, I start that app image, Rust Desk is running. When I say Rust Desk, what I'm referring to is this... Um, it's very similar to, um, well, like it says here, open source team viewer. Pretty unique uh, that it has audio that comes across uh, for free. Uh, you can use the relay servers uh, that are set up, or you can set up your own server. In this case, I'm going to download the nightly build on what I'm videoing first on here is my desktop running Dragon OS Focal. And I'm just going to grab the app image. The app image is what I found worked on the Pi. You can install dev packages on the desktop build. That's perfectly fine. I'm just going to grab the app image. And I'm going to go into my downloads folder. I'll make that app image executable. <clears throat> I was actually uh, messing with what? Oh, I guess it would help. Plus X, Rust Desk App Image. And we'll start this up. I, I don't really care so much about the, uh, the ID that uh, I'm not going to use this again. Of course, you don't want to give that ID out to anyone, along with the password. Uh, control remote desktop so it, it may only need to be set on the uh, remote end but under uh, network or no is it security under security if you unlock the security settings do the same thing on the Pi just a little different area to access it you can enable direct IP access I did it on both ends so now when I come back here and I click connect which this is the IP of the Pi in the local network. Oddly enough, I do get a prompt for the password. I'm th I'm thinking it's because the hmm, where would I set that? When it wants to connect here, I'm I'm actually looking over at the Pi. I'll have to figure this out. It's asking. Uh, that Dragon wants to request access to your device. I'm putting the password in. It's saying wrong password. Uh, I think that's maybe because the username on the Pi is Ubuntu. Anyways, I clicked accept on the uh, Pi side and now I'm looking at the Raspberry Pi in this case. So I have to look closer at that, but um, that's the only hiccup I've seen so far with this direct IP access. And so now, <clears throat> now you can see I'm connected to the Pi. I do need to do one other thing back on the uh, this end here because I don't have 
uh, essentially uh, an existing GSM network in my little lab environment here. I'm going to make my own. So I've shown this before. You know, you may or may not have to do this. It depends on your setup. If you have existing, you know, GSM in your lab, then then you won't need to do this. I'm doing this because Calypso BTS, when you start it, it needs a clock source from an existing GSM network. So I'm just going to make my own with a Blade RF XA9. I'm loading a Yate BTS compatible FPGA load here and I've already set all the settings that are needed beforehand and I've shown that in other videos so that's why I'm just going straight to starting Yate and I'll jump back over to the Pi so back over on the Pi I have my phone uh, plugged in battery inserted Again, this is a C118. I'm going to uh, put a link in the description. This will eventually be built in probably to the Dragon OS Pi build, but I'll make a zip folder of this Calypso Pi 64. Uh, and in here, we'll have everything that is needed. So I'll just show how I've set this up. I'll install all the deb packages, which I've already done, but I'll just show it uh, so everything is clear. Okay, and at the end of it, for good measures, I'll just do a sudo ld config. And so now we should be set up, and you'll see all the binaries are already here. The only ones I've really tested so far is what we need to set up this clips of BTS. And so, uh, you know, I'll slow down here. You can see the prompts. I'm using the Osmocom. I'm going to load that C123XOR to the TTY USB. I'm pointing to the firmwares folder, which is in here. So just make sure you're in the right directory. That E88, <coughs> excuse me. And so I'll hit enter on here. I'll grab the phone. I'm going to hit the red. But the phone is off. The phone has no power on right now. But I'm just going to tap the red button. Brings the phone alive. It's downloading the firmware. I'm going to reach down. I'm going to plug in uh, power, external power to the phone. Okay. And so that's sitting here. Done nothing else. Got the phone loaded. Yep, okay. And so now the next important step is we're going to come over and we're going to use that transceiver. You could do a uh, dash H and see what these settings are. I'm only setting it up for one phone. And uh, for my clock clock source, I know that the uh, GSM, the Arson, is uh, two, yeah, 240. And so I'm going to run that as my clock source. Now once I get that started, uh, I can uh, stop the uh, Yate BTS. I don't need don't need that uh, running still. So yeah, don't need that. I don't think. Got the clock source. Okay, so another window. Oop, another window. We're going to start the Osmo network in the box. And yes, you need to put that really long. Yes, I really want to pre run prehistoric software. Um, I'm going to specify the config file. I'm going to make that uh, SQLite file. And yeah, so get that started. And last but not least, I'll bring both of these to the front. See a little bit of tearing in the in the screen there, but uh, okay. So we'll run the Osmo BTX TRX. Now at this point, uh, pointing to this uh, Calypso, and we can we can check out this Osmo BTS TRX file. And I'm really just looking for that band 900. 
you can look through some of the other settings uh, but I'm just going to leave it default and so I'm going to run this and this is going to kick off the network we should see a connection between this and this screen up here okay and so everything is good and started you may see uh, some features uh, mentioned over here as failed to parse but <coughs> excuse me everything seems to be fine now I could take my Android phone we will get it started up in the meanwhile let's take a look at back on this side on the desktop side let's try this uh, Cal let me, let me see is this the RTL one okay so Cal let's do a dash s GSM 900 and let's see what we get here and the phone actually turned on uh, and already saw some activity down here it automatically because uh, it had been connected to this before it uh, it is actually connected to the uh, Calypso BTS network and let me actually I haven't actually needed to run Cal calibrate before so I'll let it run for a little bit more see what the results are um, but so far everything everything is uh, working ah okay alright so I, I cut out a little bit uh, just because I, I needed to turn the gain up and then I ran uh, this again and we can see we found the GSM 900 channel 96 and the megahertz power everything there after I turned the uh, gain up so alright there we go we see uh, start to finish uh, Raspberry Pi plus the Motorola C118 and uh, the files again I'll link to in the description and then in a future build it'll just probably all be there uh, already to go all right thanks